Hello and welcome to Physician Spotlight. I am your host, Dr. Vikram Christian. Physician Spotlight is a forum for us to learn more about our leaders and rising stars in the field of nutrition. We are very grateful to Aspen and our viewers for making this possible. On today's episode, I have Dr. Mark Corkins, who is the Division Chief of Pediatric Gastroenterology and Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center and Le Bonheur Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's fun to be here. Excellent. Um, I was wondering if you could start off, Mark, by just telling us in the audience just a little bit more about yourself. Well, let me see. So uh, I was born and raised in the state of misery, uh, went to the University of Misery, uh, and um, went to medical school in misery, um, in Missouri, for those of you <laughs> who can't figure out the joke, uh, and um, did my pediatric training at the University of Iowa and uh, pediatric gastroenterology at the University of Nebraska, big tour of the Midwest, uh, then went to Indiana University, where I basically ran nutrition support, and then have been here since uh, 2011 uh, as the division chief, and um, you know, uh, that's kind of my background. I'm married to a dietitian who's also an Aspen member, and um, you know, we like to say that we're the ins and outs of nutrition. Hmm. Excellent. And uh, at what point do you feel like you kind of made that decision in your career to uh, go towards nutrition? It's interesting. You know, nothing in life happens by an accident. At least I don't believe that. Um, in medical school, we had a biochemistry professor, Boyd O'Dell, I've never forgotten him, who said medical students don't get enough nutrition. So mm -hmm. his, um, you know, chief or whatever, gave him an hour each week to talk about nutrition. And he had a little thing that he'd created himself, a kind of little book for all of us to do. Then I did residency at Iowa. Well, there's this guy named Sam Foman there. You guys have ever heard of him? You know, uh, the, you know, the Foman Award from the AAP, the guy who did the original studies on what became, you know, infant formula. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I did fellowship in Nebraska with John Vanderhoof, who's kind of do, looked at short bowel and adaptation was his big research area. And so every place I went and I kept, going to places that nutrition was one of the major focuses and they were great people and great mentors. And so it's funny. It's like, I just, somehow nutrition was always a core of what I did and what I um, was learning. And so it just seemed natural to do that. When I, then when I get someplace else or talk to other folks, it's not that natural and it's not that core. And I'm like, what? You guys are missing out. Hmm. Yeah, definitely sounds like a combination of, I guess, your experiences and really good mentorship, which, you know, obviously is so important in what we do. Uh, tell me more about, I guess, some of the mentorship that you've received or you've had the opportunity to, to give out to some of your juniors. Well, I tell you, I tell you again, you know, it's it's a interesting in that you, everybody says that, and it's true, you stand on the shoulders of giants. You, you have great people mentoring you. Uh, you know, and, and so, like I said, I worked, uh, I went to Iowa and Sam Foman was there mm -hmm. and, uh, actually the division chief of PGI was a guy named uh, Don Mock who did biotin research. And he was a, his, even though he's a GI doc, he did nutrition stuff. Mm -hmm. And then in, in Nebraska, where I was a fellow, John Vanderhoof looked at short bowel syndrome. And so you get all this, this nutrition mentoring and guidance and so then what happens is you end up um, uh, in a position where you're a junior faculty and mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, um, if you're taught, sometimes I think what happens is you just expect that teaching is part of what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're taught and you're an academic physician, which is what I am, hard to the core, hardcore academic physician, teaching is just something you expect to do. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, of course, my personality is also that I am an extrovert. I admit that I, I like people and I love to talk and teach. And so you end up finding people and you end up looking for nutrition in everything you do. When I'm on inpatient service and I'm taking care of the GI patients, well, some of those have nutrition issues. And that's what seems to be the thing I end up teaching about to our students and our residents and our fellows. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of them. Uh, they have gone on and they've done GI and some of them have gone on and done nutrition things, which is kind of cool. 
Excellent. And, you know, I have personally been, um, I, I guess, a benefactor of your, you know, mentorship. We were um, at the faculty new attendee um, buddy system. I think we were part of that. You were yep. my faculty mentor during our conference in 2019. And uh, just so grateful, I think, for uh, all of your activity within Aspen. I've I definitely attended some of your talks. And kind of switching gears and talking about Aspen a little bit. Can you tell me more about, um, I guess, your activity within Aspen, um, what you've done, what roles you've played? Well, it's interesting because um, uh, they had a, a local chapter in, in Nebraska when I was a junior faculty. And um, so they had a nutrition symposium and they asked me to give a talk. And of course, I love to teach. So yeah, I'll give a talk. And then they had a business meeting afterwards and uh, I stayed for the business meeting. And the next thing I know, I'm helping with the leadership. And shortly thereafter, the national office put out a call for people on the chapters committee. Back then we had a chapters committee mm -hmm. and I'm being young and brash and having no thought that, you know, well, that's a little reaching. Uh, I applied and uh, they put me on the chapters committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next thing I know, I'm involved in the pediatric section and, you know, knowing no people and involved in projects because I never say no. And as you get involved, you have fun and make contacts and, and meet people. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it is a lot of fun. And it's there's great people in Aspen, and it's one of those things you look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, do you feel like um, like Aspen has supported your career in your nutrition? And if so, what advice would you say um, you can give a junior faculty member like myself um, on how to, um, I, I guess, uh, best benefit from membership in Aspen? Well, yes, it has benefited me. One hundred percent has benefited me. Get involved get involved, you know, uh, you know, uh, it, you can be in a job and you can do a great job and you can see patients and, and you can be, you know, take great clinical care. And that's, that's, that's awesome. And in a way that is our primary job, it's primary thing, what we do. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is to get involved in other things that to be honest, you do for the pleasure of doing it. You find it's a lot of fun to work on a project and see it polished up and buffed up and 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 something that's going to make a difference and improve the care for all of the patients that mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, Aspen has influence on mm -hmm. because you know we produce lots of guides and you know policies or whatever you want to call them uh, reviews and uh, the task forces uh, but people read those who aren't Aspen members. Well, you know, so these guidelines and policies we produce, they're, they're read by people who aren't Aspen members. And so we have a lot of influence and the, 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 the manuscripts that we produce has a lot of influence and there it's respected uh, because of the level of um, scholarship that's put into it. I, I guess that's probably the best word. Um, there's no junk it's backed up by science. And so mm -hmm. because of that, uh, you end up honestly um, have an influence and um, that, that makes it valuable. Absolutely. Now, from your perspective, Mark, I, I'd really be interested to know um, what changes or what big changes you've seen in the field of pediatric nutrition and where do you feel like the future is heading? Uh, changes in pediatric nutrition. Um, it's interesting in that we have more data. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new malnutrition diagnosis, for instance, and people are using Z-scores, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. The younger folks love Z-scores, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a little change is a little is a, a positive or negative makes a real difference as opposed to less than the first percentile, you know, mm -hmm. which is what that's a huge, big range. And so I see those those kind of changes that are positive changes, um, but on the other hand. One of the things I see in pediatric nutrition is it's also, though, become a very crowded field in pediatrics in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have all these new genetic disorders and, you know, immune defects. And I mean, it sounds funny, but it's like, like in pediatric training, there's so many things for them to learn. And nutrition, even though it's very core and very crucial, sometimes it's fighting for space with all the other things in pediatrics. 
Mm-hmm. And now again, I've done pediatrics my entire career, so I don't know how it is in adults, but I know in pediatric medicine, it's like, sometimes I feel like, gosh, man, we know more and we have more data, but we give it to them so quick and because they've got to move on and they've got to talk about, you know, all the, you know, the defects in the white cells and the defects in the you know, hormonal systems. And so it's funny. It's like, it's the best of times. It's the worst of times to borrow something from Charles Dickens. It's, it's interesting in that we have more, we can give people that is more literature based mm-hmm. uh, and more science based and, and more guidance, mm-hmm. but we also have less time to focus on nutrition. I feel like, um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know where the future is going. Is it is it going to get better? Are we going to figure out ways to do it all? Are we going to subspecialize? And nutrition care is going to have to be people who are nutrition focused people. Uh, in the what in the old days, nutrition seems to be so core. At least in PGI anyway, it was very core. But now even in PGI, we got kind of people who are pancreas people. We got you know liver people, and we got some nutrition people and IBD this kind of focused people. So, again, one thing about the future is you don't know what it's going to be until you get there. That is for sure. I can definitely resonate with that. All right, Mark. Um, Well, to uh, kind of end on this note, I was just wondering if you had any other words of advice to young faculty or trainees who are considering a career in nutrition. Well, absolutely. Uh, You know, nutrition, despite the fact I said there's more literature than there's ever been, there's still huge holes. Mm-hmm. huge holes in nutrition and lots of questions that need answers you know some of them are pretty simple simple questions that you know and what i was taught by one of my mentors um was pick one question answer one question well do it right design the study Don't try to answer two or three or four. Design the study to answer the one question and answer that question well. Mm -hmm. All right. If you do it right, nobody will ever need to kind of, you know, you won't need five more studies to do it. You, if you didn't do a good job. Mm -hmm. Of course, what I have learned over my years of doing those kind of studies is that when you answer one question, you create three more. And, you know, you can, you, you can make a career out of doing nutrition things and focusing on nutrition. And again, you don't necessarily have to do molecular biology. Some simple questions still haven't been answered. Mm -hmm. All right. I've done a little work in copper. Well, how often should we monitor copper levels? How often, you know, we kind of have some idea of half-life. We have some idea of, you know, what copper does and copper deficiency, but how often should we monitor it? Mm-hmm. Nobody's really done any work on any of the micronutrients on any of that kind of a question. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's a simple question. It's a simple question, but in theory, somebody should could design a way to look at that. So mm-hmm. simple question, lots of questions, you know, tackle one at a time. Mm-hmm. I love that, Mark. So answer simple questions and take one question at a time. And um, I, I think it's it's such an important uh, stage of life as a young faculty and a uh, you know trainee to pick that question. Um, and I think that's probably where you know mentorship and good experiences come into play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, I you know young faculty. I I, I love young faculty. Mm-hmm. One of our first year fellows one time came in and said. I've got some great ideas. I got a lot of ideas. And she had a list of 10 ideas for studies. I was like, it's a three year fellowship at BGI. 10 <laughs> ideas. Great. Pick one. Pick <laughs> one. Pick one. So, anyway, yeah. So, that's, that, that, that's probably the best advice I can give anybody. Pick one. Focus on one because when you pick one, it will, it will build on itself and there'll be three more questions from the one question you answer. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mark, for your wisdom and just for you know having this chat with us. Um, I've learned so much, you know, over the years and also now through this conversation. Um, it's uh, it's been great chatting with you, and uh, thank you again for your time. And thank you, Aspen, for making this possible. Hopefully, I get to see everybody in person at the next Aspen meeting. Yes, we hope so too. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. All right. Take care, Mark. 
，拜拜。